welcome to the Red Booth Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Q. On tonight's episode, I have the awesome band, Pearl. They're here to talk to us about their new music as well as play for us live. So come and join us. Awesome. So thank you so much for being here today. I've Thanks been, for, having, for having, having us. Thank you. This is really cool. I've been waiting to have you on the show for so long. I think you guys are amazing. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we made it work. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> and we're all fit in the booth. This is like amazing. Told you. <laughs> cool. And we're also going to have them be playing uh, lives for us later in the show. So definitely stay tuned for that. And let's get started by talking about how uh, Pearl became a band. Uh, well, uh, Jim and I met. Is that how it happened? Scott, Scott. <laughs> Jim's an old friend of my husband, Scott, right? He knew you. Well, old friend of you, too. Yeah, well, yeah. us, too, because yeah, he only met you a couple of years before I met you. Mm. But I met you through him. Mm -hmm. So Jim played in a band called Mother Superior that Scott and I, my husband and I, were huge dorky fans are of and still are. Nice. And um, we, I had a birthday party. Scott invited the Mother Superior guys to my birthday party to surprise me, I think, essentially. and So you were a huge fan, and they, he got them to actually come to your he, party? They came to, he you know, we're having cake. drinks. <laughs> they popped out of a cake. It was so... Surprise! Uh, <laughs> amazing. You said it was your birthday! <laughs> and we've been playing ever since. That's right. And that's it. That's the whole story, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, basically, uh, uh, you know, it was a birthday, it was a party, so we were having drinks, and I was so nervous, and I saw them standing there, and I... I had a few drinks and I got up a lot of courage and I walked over and I said, hey guys, what would you think of maybe like working with a chick singer? And then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, and, I kinda t and then I looked and they kind of paused and looked at each other and they went, okay. <laughs> and kind of, I mean, that's how I kind of remember it. Like let's, like, let's try, you know? So then from that point on, we decided to get together and try to write and it just really clicked. And that was, Almost 20 years ago. Wow. What? That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah. And since then, we've, we've done two albums. Well, three because of the acoustic one. Mm -hmm. And we also have a side band now called Motor Sister, which is um, with a, a different lineup. But, you know. What's that one about? What the, is that a different style? I'll let you take that. It's a, le a little more like heavy rock, but a uh, good rock, rock and roll. So, you know. Got to have that roll in there. Rock, and, rock and, and or roll. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a little more, uh, I hate to compare it to anything, but a little more like a Zeppelin or Thin Lizzy. ACDs. It's AC heavy DC. rock. It's heavy yeah, rock. It's heavier, right? But tuneful. Cool. And we, again, we, we sing a lot together, so, you yeah. know. Like in, in Pearl, you guys are also part of the vocals together. You, you're the main singer, and then you also do backup singing as well, right? And main singing. And main on singing. On some of the tracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And also, I think you're also one of the singers as well, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Well, and tell everybody yes. your name as well. I'm Zach. Cool. Hi, Zach. Hello. All three cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think we should do an intro and start and just sure. say who everybody is. How about how we do that? I'm Mark. The Hi, Mark. Mark. What what <laughs> instrument do you play in the band? I play keyboards. Cool. Yep. I'm Zach. I play guitar. <laughs> I'm Ryan. I play the drums. Right. I'm Pearl. I sing and I write and I dance. That's yes. true. That's true. I'm Donnie. I don't know any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> he was just waiting for a burger. He's just randomly. I was here. He was here. He ordered yeah. food. Yeah. <laughs> He's just sitting in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I play bass. Cool. I'm Jim. Play guitar. I'm Joel. I play pedal steel. Pedal cool. steel guitar. It's an instrument. Pedal <laughs> 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 and a steel. Uh. Super cool. It's like that awesome country flair, yeah. having that in there. Would you, so you guys are sort of a country rock, would you say? Or what, what would you say the genre is? I don't know what we are, because it's, it we're not... Uh, country people, are, I did some interviews, uh, you know, because we were calling it California country, and I'd get on the line with some mm. country radio guys, and they would go, so tell us about your new album. It's not really country, is it? And I was like, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know. It's not, and, but it's not rock and roll enough. It's not country enough. Right, right. It's all rock Service and roll to me, you yes, know? Yeah, so I started it calling it rock and roll with pedal steel because it's very literal, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. You know? So it is whatever Pretty you want it to be, whatever you hear. It was recorded okay. in the USA, so it is in this country. <laughs> that's true. In this country. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, but I just think it's 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 rock and roll, and sure, pedal steel maybe lends to that that flavor of country. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, I think that DJ had it wrong. But I just, I just thought, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, way, the, way to kill an interview. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this isn't really like, country, so is it? Next. Jeez. <laughs> Okay. That could be a compliment too, though, you know, because uh, if, if I guess it we depends. I guess it music, depends. We're probably talking more about Graham Parsons or Wayne right. Jennings rather than I don't know Montgomery Gentry, whatever they're called. I don't even know what that stuff sounds like. You yeah, know? No, so no, 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 no. if they didn't compare it to that, it's probably a good thing. I guess it depends on what kind, what genre of, yeah, yeah. what you said. <laughs> I don't know. We play good music. Yeah. That's right. I love it. I think it's great. And so you write the music as well, and and with you, you're both writers of, of this album that's mm -hmm. yes. come out. Yes. Cool. And also, so I'd love to hear a bit about your music that's coming up. Um, I know you have some songs that you have recently put out. Um, I think there's a music video online. There um, are a couple music videos online. Mm -hmm. We did it with director Travis Shin at Sphere Studios, which was really fun and very cool. It's a very cool giant room. It looks like a rock and roll library. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few online, I don't know, two or three or yeah. uh, something like that. Cool. Yeah. And what would you say, um, the, these songs you're going to be playing for us, like are those sort of newer songs or are they on the most recent album? Just give us a little info about the music you're going to be playing for us on the show here. They're all off the latest album called Heartbreak and Canyon Revelry. Nice. Yeah. So it's the newest stuff. Cool. And what's the um, inspiration behind the music? Like, so there's two songs that we play. Oh, we have to take a break. We'll be right back, and then we'll pick this up, and we'll hear more about Pearl. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with the band Pearl. All right, cool. So we were just talking about some of the new music and the songs that you're going to be playing for us on the show. Um, so what's the name of the first song? Uh, Leave On. Cool. And that's Jim and I write together, and how we've usually written is he'll he'll say, "Oh, I have this great melody, I have this great riff, I have this great you know skeleton of melody," and then he'll put it on a recording and send it over to me, and then I'll start plugging in lyrics, right? Basically, cool. and this Levon was I think it was like a couple days after the news came that Levon Helm had passed, mm -hmm. and he heard this music and he said this is inspired by Levon and he had a uh, you had a couple that you had some lyrics in place I don't remember but yeah mm -hmm. and um, and then he just sent it over to me and we fleshed it out yeah but it's it's for Levon Helm wow that's so cool yeah. it's beautiful thanks and uh, what was the name of the second song that you sang for us? sleepless night and same process uh, sleepless night actually yeah we wrote that a few years ago, probably mm -hmm. like seven years ago, maybe, mm -hmm. before we got to record it. Isn't that and amazing how you'll have something like that just sort of just being kept, you know, secret from everybody for so long? It's and true. You can't wait till people finally hear it. Yeah. yeah. And then you, once you get a couple good ones, you got to wait until you get a couple more good ones because you can't, <laughs> you can't put it out into <laughs> one, that yeah, one yeah. song. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my one song. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing also how much your schedule fills up when you have a baby. That's right? right. So we had this music, and I, it, it was actually a sleepless night because I was you know, up a lot, and As you sat in my with... kitchen and mm -hmm. and just started writing, and it was just kind of this moment where I don't know, when you write, you dig into your experiences, mm -hmm. and and uh, a lot of times heartbreak comes up and mm -hmm. old love stories, and so it, it's a it's a miserable love song about sleepless night. <laughs> it's a wonderful yeah. miserable love song. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's cool, and it's, it's also... It's very country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right. And inspired partially by your baby. Um, so, kind of, I mean... Not, no. I'm the not. sleepless part. <laughs> baby didn't break my heart. No, the baby didn't break your heart, no. <laughs> the sleepless part, maybe. The sleepless yeah. part. But that's natural. <laughs> that goes with the... With the territory. That's right. <laughs> well, so I would love to hear a quick sort of story about how the rest of the band sort of came together. So maybe we could just kind of start from this end. And oh. talk uh, well, uh, Pearl was already knee deep in recording her record and uh, has the wonderful <laughs> J.D. Manus on some of her tracks, who's a pedal steel legend, you know, goes back to working with the Birds in the 60s and wow. Buck Owens. And, Eric Clapton. Um, yeah, yeah, Amazing. Eric Clapton, Tears in Heaven, lots of great stuff. 
and uh, they were looking to do a live show, and uh, Zach and I have played together a bunch, so Zach recommended me. And, uh, and we said, is his hair as good as Jamie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 he's in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we came in and did a great gig. And, and then you, know. you recorded, too. You were, yeah. You were on the record also. I'm on the record, too. Yeah, yeah. It's so, awesome. Yeah, and it's just been going great. So. It's a fun cool. crew. <laughs> yeah, they're all right. Yeah, you know. You guys seem to get along pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good time. <laughs> cool. That's big. That's actually really important too. I think when you can tell when bands are like really vibing and are good friends, mm -hmm. then they last for so long, you know. So, and obviously that's been working for you guys too. Yeah. I think you hear it in the music too. Oh yeah, yeah. I think right. so. Yeah. Wait, this is a band. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's We're your story? Yeah. Uh, my story. Uh, I did an event uh, last October called Strange Eighties, and uh, that's where I met Pearl and Scott. It's a charity, charity event. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Charity event, and we. Um, what's a, a charity for? Uh, we actually raise money for mental health and suicide prevention. Oh wow! Uh, to Linda Bennington, she's our benefactor for it. So. Very cool. So, yeah, so we, we get a bunch of celebrities come in. We do 80s cover songs. Awesome. So, yeah, so, so fun. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do it, got to do it come, come I want to do that Pat Benatar song. I know. Oh, yeah. you would be so good at that. I'm trying to squeeze so, We're trying. Trying but, to squeeze but Tina's in. not too shabby. No, 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 that's going to be cool. But, uh, yeah, so I met them there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how it happened. We just stayed in touch because yeah. we played some songs together last year. Right. And then yeah. you said if you ever... Oh, yeah, yeah, You ever yeah, need yeah. a band player? Yeah, right, right. Move right. around. And then, uh, so, just so happens, I needed a band player. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I, just so came I in. got in touch, yeah. yeah. That's basically, I'm the new guy. Cool. <laughs> super, super new. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so. That's awesome. Breaking them in. Breaking them yeah. in. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what I about you, Ryan? I came in through uh, Jay Rustin, who produced the record. He, I had worked with him in the past, and he recommended me for, when they were putting this together to record the record, he recommended me to them, and... I think I showed up at your house and did some pre-production, mm -hmm. and they, they let me stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Ryan, actually, he, he used to play with Matchbox 20 for a while. Did, did you? Yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, that was fun. What oh, it's sort of good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the crap? Fancy. Well, not the finest drummer. See, that's good. You had to say something, because he probably wasn't going to say it. He wasn't going to say it, so I, I had know. to, you know. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. And, and go ahead. What about you? I knew her husband for, from back in New York. I grew up in New York, and uh, I've known her husband since 86. Nice. So I was, so Scott was like, hey, my wife's going to, we're going to, well, you were dating. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yeah, at the time. Mm. Um, we're performing this band, and you want to come over? And then we started playing, like, acoustically. Yes. Like, the, the four of us. So is it the four of us or the three of us? It's just you, they don't even know, actually, your husband is actually Scott Ian from Anthrax, so that's the connection there, and... Um, so I, yeah, I knew him from New York. Right. And uh, we both kind of relocated to Los Angeles around the same time and stayed in touch. And, and I, was, uh, I was actually acting in a movie about her father. Coincidentally, Coincidentally at the same time, when I same... started dating Scott, yeah. he introduced me to, he's like, you're going to meet one of my best friends in the world, Zach. <laughs> and I was like, Zach? Throne is act. He's in a movie about my dad right now. It was like this weird, so weird. cosmic Small thing. World. He was playing Jim Steinman. Yeah, what? I was playing Jim Steinman in a VH1 movie. And he goes, "Isn't this weird?" And I'm dating Meatloaf's daughter. Like, what, <laughs> well, what are the odds? How did that and happen? The weirdest thing, even weirder, is her father was filming another movie on the same soundstage as the movie we were filming. Mm -hmm. And there was like signs all over for a crew going Meatloaf parking, Meatloaf catering, Meatloaf dressing rooms. And he was driving around going, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. Where yeah. am I supposed to park? <laughs> Where do I get?" <laughs> I thought it was for him. It's so confusing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was all these, like, you know, cosmic things sort of linking us together. And then to make it even more cosmic, mm -hmm. once we got together, started oh, yeah, it gets even uh, be becoming friends, we realized that we actually knew each other when we were children in Woodstock. Me New and her in Little, yeah. My mother worked at his uncle's rock, cafe. Cafe Rock Club in, in Woodstock, Woodstock in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So because so, I put up a thing and my cousin's in there and she wrote me, she goes, I had a friend with that same name and... His cousin three was my How? one of my best friends. It's just we, so we actually played together. Yeah, through, uh, summertime. as little kids, it's summer times. Yeah. And so you ended up still finding each other later. Oh yeah, it's just like layer after layer after. It's amazing. I feel like there's people that just end up finding each other like that. They're just meant to yep. be, know each other. Okay, Maybe, yeah. We have to take another break, but we'll be right back with Pearl. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here with Pearl. 
So we were just talking about a really cool coincidence that they actually knew each other back in Woodstock when yeah. they were kids. Little kids. And ended up then randomly again reconnecting in thirty years later in New York. <laughs> no, so, actually yeah, here. Oh, it was here. Yeah, we oh, all kind okay. of wound up in Los Angeles together, and then cool. There it is. And so uh, started playing music. Started playing music. We used to have a residency at the Foundation Room right. at the House of Blues. No, oh my God. I know. Yeah. Rest in peace. It's so sad that it's not there anymore. Yeah, we're all, I hope we're they so come sad. back. Wow. Yeah, every Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. So That's fun. So, here we are. Very cool. Well, and then how about you? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the best story of all. Yeah, 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 no kidding. Where do you hear this? He's <laughs> a keyboard player, and uh, Ryan, who I knew, uh, said, hey, you want to play with Pearl? I said, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you knew Joel, too, right? Yeah, I knew Joel. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. True. And I play some classic country together. We did some classic but, country. Yeah. Yeah, keep, keep so it's all, all in the family. Mark's been in Crowded House and Super Tramp, though. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. See? Yeah. That's good. You got to shout yeah, it out for him. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so which what, which band were you in the for the most time, Crowded House and Super Tramp before? Uh, it's kind of even. One would break up and the other <laughs> one would start up. And <laughs> it happened a few times. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I Did you go on tour Super with Tramp? them? Yeah. Yeah? That's yeah. awesome. <clears throat> How exciting. You guys have such a rich history with everybody combined. So, and, and I don't know if you guys tracked on that, but on the last segment, we were talking about the fact that your father is meatloaf. Yeah. So that's amazing. So, I'm, I mean, you basically grew up surrounded by music. Yeah. I grew up on a tour bus. <laughs> that must have been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How much time you got? Yeah. <laughs> we got, well, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> I'd love to hear something about it. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I, you know, ever, that's a question I get all the time. What's it like having Meatloaf as a dad? What's mm-hmm. it like having a rock star as a dad? It's normal to me. I don't know. What's it like having a policeman as a dad or a surgeon as a dad so, or know, a doctor? Very strict. Yeah. You know? <laughs> My dad was very strict, you know, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, we, I did grow up on a tour bus and in, in and out of arenas. and But also when we were home, it was very... Very regular, you know, mm-hmm. dad in his glasses on, on playing fantasy baseball. He was my <laughs> softball coach and, you know, I had curfews and... Yeah. And he was probably even more chores strict. and allowances <laughs> and all that stuff. So it was, you know, go out on the road and it's, you know, thousands of people screaming and uh, the rock and roll lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. And then, but then you get home and it's very... Normal. Yeah. I hate to use the word normal, it is normal. because what's normal right. is normal yeah. to me, you know? Yeah. But it was a good balance, I think. I would guess that it probably gave you um, a better acclimation to the to being on stage and it's like not I mean comfortable yes. up on stage. Yeah. I actually when I was eighteen, my dad said, You got a great voice. Maybe do you wanna try singing in my band? Because Bat Two was coming out, and I said, I was like, oh, God, okay. And he said, well, you're going to have to audition. And I said, okay. Oh, man. So he was playing Madison Square Garden, and he said, so tonight, you're going to stand off on the side. Nobody's going to see you, but we're going to give you a live mic. Here's the record. Learn the parts. And you come up, and we're going to record it and see how you do. He just went, here you go, go, learn it, go. And then, and he's going to, George is going to, George Worland is going to isolate your vocals. And then I'm going to take a listen after and we're going to see how you do. And I, and I, (laughs) I'm Madison Square Garden, sold out, you know, Bad at Hell 2. And I, uh, I guess I, I passed and I sang with him for nine years. Yeah. And wow. Yeah. So, and when we toured all, all around the whole world on that, on that record. North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Middle East, South Africa. Yeah, That's so amazing. I got I got a lot of um, education. <laughs> That's a a very cool seat to have to watch a performer like him handle a stage and how 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 to do that. It's not easy. It's very scary if you yeah. don't just take command. You mm-hmm. know. Because if you don't take command, the audience will swallow you. Totally. And they're done oh. in two seconds, yeah. you know. And he really showed me how, like, he's uh, he's in charge. Yep. 
you know. But uh, yeah, but even on, on tour, I was treated no, no differently than anybody else. Yeah, I got, I got paid, but I had to, you know, be on time and I had to follow the rules. I wouldn't have not followed the rules, but um, yeah, anyway, I got a great education. That is so amazing. I just such I think it's so cool that you got to actually learn that way. I mean, what better internship or, you know, class can you ever have than actually going on tour on yeah. a, a worldwide tour like that and singing. So yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to Pearl going on tour too. And um, do you guys have any upcoming shows or, or, or things that you'd like to give a shout out to before we go on to your performance? Just a small thing. Yeah, just like it, it's Tiny. whatever. It's just Woodstock 50 Festival. <laughs> we're playing that. Yeah, we'll good, yeah. And we'll be just playing. Just now. <laughs> in September, the Bourbon and Beyond Festival oh, with yeah. uh, same day as the Foo Fighters, Fighters and I think John Fogarty and... Um, and then, Who are those guys? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Some, some <laughs> people said they're big or whatever. Yeah. And in July, we'll be playing, and we'll be opening for Ward Davis. We'll be playing at the Troubadour, which I'm excited about. Yeah. I've never awesome. performed there before. Actually, I sang one song with Cody Jinks two years ago. He, he asked me to come oh, up. Cool. But, um, Troubadour, it's awesome. Yeah, Troubadour great. is I've very cool. Since mm -hmm. oh, really? you play there well, already? It's the best. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Well, you guys will have to check them out. <laughs> go and go to Woodstock and see Pearl. And um, we're going to go on to their live performance next. So stay tuned for the band, Pearl. So we're here with Pearl, and they're going to play some live songs for us. What are the songs you're going to play? We're going to play Leave On and Sleepless Night. All right. Can't wait.
call off this fight You can make me feel better Just turn out the light All you ever do is make me cry And all I ever did was wonder why Sorry is an echo in my life Go on and make me dream that it's all right Oh, it's all right It's gonna be another sleepless night
feeling now she finally got it right Gina ran away with her life and hell to pay thinking no one's gonna miss her burns a place to where she lay She says she's a writer All the stories stand beside her Yeah, the baby's just a fighter on the page Yeah, the baby's just a fighter on the page No one's gonna miss her. Head. 